to create the love of Allah and love of Rasulullah in our children's heart. If that this love of Allah is there, if the love for Rasulullah is there, this thing soon or later will pull the person towards Salah, towards practicing the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A person was presented to Rasulullah who had just become Muslim some days ago. And of course, in the pre Islamic days, this person was used to drinking. After becoming Muslim, of course, he realized he saw the truthfulness of Islam. But even after becoming a Muslim, he could not give up that habit right away. It wasn't easy. And we know it is not easy. A person comes with a lot of habits in the days of before Islam. And all of a sudden, this person comes into the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So few times, this person was caught drinking and he was drunk. And each time, they brought him to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to apply the Islamic punishment on him. So finally, the third or the fourth time, when they brought him to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, a person got upset seeing him in that situation, and again and again, a sahabi curses at him. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to that sahabi, don't curse at him, because I know he loves Allah and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. All I'm saying is, drinking alcohol, of course, is considered to be a major sin in Islam, but we all, we know our situations. We know our situation with our deen. We just hope that inshallah, whatever we are trying, and we keep on trying our best, as long as we keep this love of Allah and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in our hearts, inshallah, this will pull us towards the good deeds one day, inshallah. We need to remember, this is the miracle of this deen. This deen was sent to this world till the day of Qiyamah, not only for the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I would like you to be inshallah be very attentive, I'm trying to present some very important points and things that normally we don't talk about. Maybe something new that you will hear it for the first time. And I'm not saying it on my own, this is something that we find in the hadith and in the books of our deen. This deen was not sent only for Rasulullah time, it was sent for people, for the people that will come in this ummah till the day of Qiyam. Any person that loves to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and wants to live his life according to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has to come into the deen and follow Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So the question is, what is our connection with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam at the present time? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as we know that he passed away. So did that burial of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam or the death of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam break our connection with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Of course not. We need to understand this and keep in mind very clearly that our connection with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did not break. All the other nations who claim to follow any religion even if they believe in any prophet that they try to follow, they don't have any connection with their prophets. Their connection is wrong. The miracle of this deen is that the connection of this ummah with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is still being established and day by day it can get stronger. It's not something that I, I, I would think that okay, there is some connection because I'm a Muslim and this is the connection. No, you can keep this connection, you can strengthen the connection and you, work, you can work towards having this connection. So be, to be so strong and so close in your connection with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to the level that we know that there are a lot of scholars, not only they were, there are a lot of scholars of Islam who up to this day Sometimes they get some instructions from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in their dreams. 
Sayyidina Bilal radiallahu anhu, after Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had passed away, he spent some days in Medina Munawwara and he was drawing game night. Because he is a person who devoted his life to be around Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam at all times. Now, when he goes out in the streets of Medina, he remembers that yesterday I was walking with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam here. And he is walking through these streets and he is just viewing and visioning being with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam crying and crying and crying throughout the day and night. He's crying. So all the Sahaba, when they look at the situation after a few days, they approach and said, Bilal, you can't do this. But he can't stop crying. I see Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I feel that he is with me here, but I don't see him. Umar radiallahu alayhi wa suggested, Bilal, you can't stay here. You have to leave Medina. And they forced Bilal to leave Medina Munawwara and he went to see him. Sometime later, Bilal Ali Allah sees the dream. In the dream, he saw Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and said, Oh Bilal, why have you neglected me? Why don't you visit me? Right away, in the middle of the night, he picks up a container of water and a stick. And he says to his wife, I'm going to Medina. From Syria, you're going to walk to Medina? I, I'm going to Medina. That's it. No one can stop you. Right there, he leaves for Medina Munawwara. Upon his arrival in Medina Munawwara, everyone was so happy to see Bilal when he arrived back in Medina. So they all started requesting Bilal to call the Adhan, and Bilal says, No. I cannot call the Adhan after the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because when I call the Adhan I remember Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in those days when I used to say Ashhad anna Muhammad Rasulullah I used to see Muhammad Rasulullah in front of my own eyes but I can't see him now I can't call the Adhan Umar radiallahu alayhi wa sallam Bilal please call the Adhan Sahaba from Ashra al-Mubashra Bilal please call the Adhan no I can't that's it if anyone can make him call the Adhan, would be the grandchildren of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because of their connection and relationship with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam out of respect, Bilal will not be able to refuse. So people went to Hassan and Hussain radiallahu alayhi that if you go and request Bilal to call the Adhan. They went and said, Bilal, please call the Adhan the way you used to call during the time of our grandfather. He couldn't say no to this. And he started calling the Adhan. It says in the history, when Bilal got to Ashhad Anna Muhammad Rasulullah, the whole city was crying. The whole city of Medina, people left their homes. They were almost like they're unconscious. They don't know what is happening there. They used to see Muhammad Rasulullah around them. They can't see him, but they're hearing Ashhad Anna Muhammad Rasulullah. This call of Bilal is reminding them of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. This connection of our ummah did not break with Rasulullah. Abu Ubaid ibn al-Jarrah he says when we were surrounding Damascus and this neighborhood it took us many days before we could conquer it and one day I saw Rasulullah in my dream he said Rasulullah said to me in my dream that inshallah tomorrow you will conquer the mission. Then he left right away. So I said, Rasulullah, please, Ya Rasulullah, normally when you come to my dream, you spend some time with me and I can talk to you. How come you're living, living so quick? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, I have to go and attend the janazah of Abu I will wait until Allah will mark that date on his calendar. And when he investigated, he found out that was the exact same date and time when Abu Bakr will be Allah on the connection of this Ummah did not break with the Prophet sallallahu Each time you send rule and blessing on Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, your connection is getting stronger. Each time you send rule on Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Malakka take it and then present that to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ya Rasulullah, a gift for you from such and such person. This connection, it keeps on getting stronger by following the Sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
by sending blessings on Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. What did they send? As we send blessings, we all know the hadith that when a person sends the blessing on Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, angels they take it and they present that to Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Ya Rasulullah, such and such person have sent you a gift. Subhanallah, imagine we are sitting in Buffalo in America, so far away from the Deen of Nawara, but here, as they say, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Right there, the angels takes our salam and present it. Ya Rasulullah, this is from brother and so and so. Our name is being mentioned over there. Just think about this connection. And as Shaykh al-Hadith, Mawla Zakari, rahimahullah, have narrated in Falayl al Rud, the worship of the Rud. Every Thursday, the a'mal of the Umar are being presented to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Abdullah ibn Mubarak, rahimahullah, who was known as Amir al-Mu'mineen of the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Amir al-Mu'mineen in the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He says, once I went for hajj, I was, after performing a couple of tawaf, I got tired and I just sat there by the Kaaba, I sat looking at the Kaaba, and just, I was visioning the Rahmah of Allah descending on us as we are just sitting and looking at the Kaaba. I fell asleep. In my dream, I saw a dream, as the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was telling me, that Abdullah, when you go back to Iraq, he was from Kufa. When you go back to Iraq, you go to Iraq, you go back to Kufa, give Buhran my salam, and tell him that I will, he will have a place with me in Jannah. Abdullah ibn Mubarak says, I woke up, and I started thinking about the dream. I know Buhran. Buhran is Majusi, he's a fire worshiper, he's not even a Muslim. This is a person who's not even a Muslim. How can I go and convey the salam of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to him, and tell him that he will be in Jannah with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? So I said to myself, no, I can't do that. Now, this is amazing, just an amazing situation. This is a great muhaddis of his time, Amir al Mu'minin al Hadith. And he knows the Hadith better than us. That when you see Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in your dream, truly you have seen him. And now he's confused about his own dream. He says, I said to myself, let me try to forget it. And again, I fall asleep. And again I, see, again I see Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in my dream saying, Abdullah, make sure you don't forget my, my message. Convey my message to Buhran and tell him that he will have a place with, you, a place with me in Jannah. Abdullah ibn Mubarak said that only added my confusion and I didn't know what to do. And again I said, let me just try to forget it. Hopefully by the time I get there I'll forget everything. And again he falls asleep and again he sees the same dream that Abdullah, make sure you give Buhran my salam and give him a glad tidings that he will be having, having a place with me in Jannah. Abdullah ibn Mubarak says, this time when I woke up, I decided that this is the message of Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Three times I see the same dream. I'm not sitting anywhere else. I'm sitting in the haram. I'm sitting near the Kaaba. And I see Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam in my dream. And I see him in the same way as I know about him in through the ahadith. So I will go back and I will convey the message to Buran. And Buran deals with it however he wants. He went back. He asked people, did Buhram become Muslim? No, he did not. He goes to Buhram, he looks at his Lord. Buhram, I need to talk to you separately, in private. Okay, come in. He knows, this is a great score of Islam, mashallah, it's yours. Come, welcome, come to my home, mashallah. What brings you here? He says something very private. I don't want anyone else to hear about it. Okay, take some more separate room. Buhram is one of the wealthiest people of Iraq. Abdullah ibn Mubarak says, I start giving him a brief introduction of dreams, what is the situation of dream, what is the position of dream in Islam, and finally I said to him, look, I'm not trying to impress you with this dream, and I'm not even trying to bring you into Islam by just mentioning false dreams, I will just convey the dream to you, and you deal with it the way you like. I will just leave after telling you the dream. He says, okay, go ahead, just tell me what it is. So I told him the whole dream, that this is what I saw in my dream three times, I'm sitting by the Kaaba and see Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying, Dora, uh, Abdullah, go and give Buhran my salam and tell him that he will have a place with me in Jannah. Buhran, upon hearing this, he started weeping. He said, Abdullah, I know you are not making it up. And I will tell you what is the reason behind this dream. He says, while the day, during the days you were in Hajj, I had the wedding of my daughter. And in her wedding, I invited all the big shots and big people, the wealthy people and the leaders of the country. And because of that, we had a big, big, huge reception, and we were preparing the food 
for almost three, four days. He says, after we had the reception, the night after that, I was very tired and I went to rest. Someone was knocking at my door late in the night. When I opened the door, it happened to be a woman from our neighborhood that I know her. She is a Muslim woman and she is known for her worships, for her worshipsness. She is a very nice woman. And I saw her standing at my door. She had a candle in her hand. She said to me, Abdullah, can you, we don't have a light at our home. Could you please, Abdullah, put on the fire in this candle? Light the candle for me. I started thinking according to, because of the fire worshiper, according to our religion, this is not allowed. And especially taking the fire at night time. After thinking for a short while, I said, you know, this poor lady, she doesn't even have no light at her home. I know she has three young daughters, orphans, and uh, they, have to, they have to survive somehow. I said to myself, let me just give her the light. And I candled the light for her and gave it to her. Little later, she knocked the door again, and she said, oh, it went off. Could you please put it on again? And again, I put it on for, to, for her, and she was a little hesitant to leave. And I started thinking, there is something wrong there. She goes out. A few minutes later, she knocks at the door again. She says, Bahram, I'm sorry to disturb you at this time, but this was only an excuse for me to come and talk to you. I need to talk to you about something. That is, you had the wedding of your daughter, and you people were preparing food for all of these days. You know that, you know my situation, I'm a widow, I have three young daughters, they are orphans, we know they lost their father, and for all of these three, four days, as they were smelling the food, they were crying and asking me to come to you and ask you for some food for them, but I told them that no, they are cooking it for themselves and it's for their need, I can't go and ask anyone. But Abdullah, but Bahram, now I know that the wedding is over, everything is going to go to garbage, if you please give me something from the leftover that you have so I can feed my daughters. They are crying. Muhammad said, as soon as I heard this, I had tears in my eyes, and I quickly left my home and I said, you know, I said to this lady, okay, I will carry these things with my own hands and I'll bring it to your doors. She couldn't believe, she said, no, no, you don't have to, you just give me whatever you have, left over you have, I will take it to my daughters. I said, no, I will come and feed your daughters with my own hands. He takes all the food and other things that he could afford to go and give it to them at the time, and he says, I went there and I fed them, and I waited there and I told them, I'm not leaving them with this home until I will see a smile on your face because I was supposed for you people to cry for the last three more days. I stayed there until they, I saw a smile on their face and I kept on giving them jewelries, a lot of gifts, and until I saw a big smile on their face, when I was leaving, their mother told them to ask them to make dua for me, and they said to me, that may Allah bless you with Islam and give you a place with our Prophet in Jannah. After mentioning this, Muhammad says to Abdullah ibn Mubarak, Abdullah, please, I would like to take the Shahada and I would like to come into Islam. Your Prophet, not only that he took care of orphans when he was alive, even today he is taking care of these of you. His woman so much that he comes to you in your dream and he knows of what's happening over here. If this is true, then of course I have to be a Muslim because I don't find this anywhere else in the world. Our connection with the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did not pray. It's a strong connection. No one else can have it. It's only this Ummah and it's a blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on this Ummah. Imam Malik rahimahullah, I'm sure you heard about him. He used to wait to see Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in his dream to ask him questions. And one day he wants to go for Hajj, he's thinking about whether should I go for Hajj or not, he wants to die and be buried in Medina. And his word is, if I would go for Hajj, and I die over there, then I will be buried out of Medina. And he sees Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in his dream and asking Ya Rasulullah, it's time for Hajj, what should I do? Should I go for Hajj? If you tell me that I have enough life to live, that I can go and come back, then I will go, otherwise I won't go for Hajj, because I want to be buried in Medina here. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam pointed five fingers like this, to Imam Malik rahmatullahi Now Imam Malik rahmatullahi alayhi wa woke up, he didn't know what this is, five mean, five days, weeks, months, years. So he sent a person to Imam Ibn Sireen, like Allah. Ask Imam Ibn Sireen, what does he say about this? Imam Ibn Sireen says, 
Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is not telling you how many days you're going to live. He is informing you about that ayah, that in the Quran, that five things no one has the knowledge about them except Allah. إِنَّ اللَّهَ عِنْدَهُ عِنْدَ السَّاعَةِ وَيَلَسِرُ الْغَيْسَ وَيَعْلَمُ مَا فَرْحَامُ وَمَا تَدْرِي نَفْسُ مَا لَا تَكْسِدُ غَلَى وَمَا تَدْرِي نَفْسُ بَيَّرَ عِنْدَ مُونَ So I don't know when you would die. I'm skipping a long history, but this is something that I may remind you. Normally we talk about seerah. A very unique chapter of the seerah is the seerah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam after his death. Very unique, very unique portion of the seerah that no one else can have. It. The seerah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam after his death. The second principle of the Arabian Muslim Once he's standing in a group of students, and one of the students comes with some food in, hand, in his hand, and he says he stands shouting at his teacher, Marafi, at the principal of the school. He says, look at this food. It's full of water. There is nothing, no meat, there is nothing in it. And you people are feeding the students things like this. This is what you think we are going to survive on? And he throws the food over there, right there, and he goes away. While he was doing this, the students say that Marafir and Rufiuddin and Abdullah and he kept on looking at the student from top to bottom. He didn't say anything. He was just quiet. But he just looking at this. Very surprisingly. The student left and Marafiuddin and Abdullah and he asked the other students, Is he a student of Abu Dharma Yudu? They said, Yes. Who gave him that vision? I'm the person who gave the final approval for the admission and I don't remember the student. They said, no, no, he's a student of our dialogue. He said, no, go and find out, investigate about him. They investigated and found out that he used the name of another student who, was, who had a similar name and when that person, that student was out, he came up to pretending that he was that student and he started just eating in the school. So the student asked for the name of Allah, how did you know that he was not a student? He said, because when I became the principal, the day I became the principal, I saw Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in my dream. He was standing at the well, he had a well over there of water. He was standing in the, at the well, and as he's pulling the water out, it was all milk, and he started giving everyone milk. And all the people started taking the milk from him. When everyone was done, he told me that all the people that got the milk from this well from my hands, they are the students of their room. In my dream, I don't remember seeing this student. He says, every student that comes and applies over here, as soon as I see the face, I recognize him if he was the student of our daughter or not. And accordingly, I give him the admission or I reject him. Our connection is there. Hadim Dadul Rahmatullahi Ali. Well known scholar. And in fact, most of the knowledge of Deen that is being spread. And keep this in mind, most of the knowledge of Deen that is being spread in the world through books, articles, Islamic institutes like that are used all around the world and the work of Jamal, it's all coming from the Sulsala of Qaidim Dabullah Rahmatullahi Ali. He says that he was the Khalifa of another student of a scholar who passed away, then he was still looking forward to have his connection with some other scholar, and he couldn't make any decision who he should choose as his share and his teacher. One day he saw Rasulullah in his dream, that Rasulullah held his hand, and he puts it into the hand of another man, saying, this is your sheikh. He wakes up and he doesn't know the man. It only adds to his confusion, that now I don't know who that person is. So he stands traveling all around looking for that person. Who that person be? Someone told him that there is a good scholar in our nearby by town. That well, it wasn't far away from them. In our nearby town, there is a big scholar. There is a scholar. He's had his sister, his imam in a small masjid, and he teaches children what the Dalit Bhagavad is what he's doing. He's teaching over there. Go see if that person may be the one that you have seen in the dream. He went there. As soon as he entered the masjid, they see his 
it's exactly the same fix that he had seen in the dream. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa putting his hand into the person's hand. He couldn't control his emotions. He rushed to him. And he went and he shakes that person's hand and he kisses his hand and he kisses his forehead. His name was Muhammad Muhammad. As soon as Muhammad Muhammad saw this reaction of Hadi Dadullah without Hadi Dadullah saying anything to him, he says to him, Dadullah, you depend too much on your, you trust your dreams too much. Which means, on the other hand, this person has seen some dream too. Allah, why don't what is going there? Just like Ali Ali Allah Muhammad says, one day, I saw in my dream that I was in the masjid of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is during the khilaf of Muhammad alayhi wa I saw in my dream as if I was doing Salat al-Fajr behind Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. After we finished Salat al-Fajr, I went out of the masjid to see that a woman was standing with a plate of dates. She asked me to give it to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I went and I gave it to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He took a date from there and he put it in my mouth. When I ate it, it was so sweet and tasty that I had never had such a date before in my life. This is the dream. He said, I woke up. I went for Salat al Fajr, did Salat al Fajr behind Muhammad radiallahu anhu. After Salat, when I left the masjid, there was a woman standing with the same description that I have seen my dream, standing outside of the masjid with a plate of dates. She said to me, Can you please go and pass this on to Amir al Muminin Umar radiallahu anhu? So he says, I took the plate and I'm looking at it. I said, This is exactly the same dream that I seen last night. And I went and I gave it to Umar of Allah. He took the plate from my hand and he takes one day and he puts it in my mouth. It was the same case that I had in my dream. So I said to Umar of Allah, Umar, please, one more. He said, How much was Allah gave you? <laughs> so I said to him, Amir al Muminin, what are you doing now? You are now, you're really scaring me if you know all my dreams too. He said, no, 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 this is not a rule. This is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He informs us whenever he goes. But the point that I'm mentioning here, our connection with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is through sending blessings on Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, establishing this love for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, following the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Imagine if a person is in the worst situation in the world, facing, may Allah protect, but facing the most difficulties and hardship. And if that person sees the Prophet sallallahu is dream, consoling him, saying, don't worry about any situation, subhanAllah, this is better kingdom than anything else that we can have in the world. What can be more better kingdom than, uh, than this kingdom of having Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa our dream, as Rasulullah sallallahu sees, man and at the same time, of course, there are a lot of rules. I'm not going, I'm not saying every dream means whatever you see it. And if you see the dream, you became the virtuous person. No, there are the far who have seen dream Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the dream. He's inviting them to the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there is Abu Jahl who in his true life, with his own eyes, saw Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But when he did not follow Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, did not obey Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he did not get anything out of it. So these are nirmas of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, these are blessings of Allah if we utilize them, if we utilize this connection. So first thing we have need to do is establish this strong connection. As I said, each time you say, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad, this is a connection that is getting established and getting stronger. Establish this connection through sending a lot of good, a lot of blessings of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Number two, instead of following the sunnahs as much as possible. Following the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will give us the strength in our iman and this love. Remember, sometimes when you talk to non-Muslims, those who don't care about their religion at all, but when you put them in a position of defending them of their religion, then they become very strong about their religion. Just like our souls. Some years ago we didn't care about anything. Now when we saw that all the things are all the attacks on Islam and Muslims, so we started getting up for Islam. We started practicing more. So this is exactly what it is when you have the sunnah, now you are protecting it, you are defending it, it's yours. Normally, the beard is someone else's, but when you have it, it's yours. Hijab is someone else's, but when you have it, your family has it, now it's yours. And you will be defending it as this is mine, not someone else's. And that is the time when we feel that this being is mine. 
that the Sunnah is mine, my Prophet is mine, and I'm the follower of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. I'm the one who's going to carry his Sunnahs, and I'll make sure the world sees his Sunnahs and his way of life. And of course, this is the main thing that we would like to do as our children are growing. We want to make them grow with this love of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. We want to inject the love of Allah's Messenger وسلم, in their heart, so as they grow, they know that this is part of our Iman. Rasulullah said in the hadith, No one can be a true believer till that person loves me more than his parents, children, and everyone else in the world. And today, normally, believe me, this is a normal situation. I see this a lot. You talk to some youth about Islam and about love for Prophet وسلم, they don't know what does this love mean. What do you mean I love him? Okay, I believe him. I say, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. But when it comes to love, what do you mean that I should love him? They don't have that concept of love. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, This love for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is part of our iman. It's part of our iman. That Sahabi is drinking, but he loves Allah and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That will protect him and he was protected later on from that act. Same thing. We have a lot of wrongdoings. Let's not look at the wrong way. Some of the time you say, I will inshallah do the sunnah and grow my beard or wear the imam or shame my clothes or do follow the sunnah when I'm ready for it, when I become a better Muslim. No, these things will make you a better Muslim. Otherwise, we will just be there forever. When we stand with these things, now these things will connect us to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And once the connection starts getting established, subhanAllah, this is the best thing you have done in your life for yourself, that you start establishing your connection with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So connect yourself with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Connect your children through love with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Show them what is the love for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Respect for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And how to follow the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Again, I will come with the same statement that I started with, that that our connection with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did not break. This is the miraculous part of our deen and iman. That our connection with the Prophet of Allah is, is still there. Is it still there and it can get very strong and you can have it getting stronger and stronger day by day? Imam Siyuti rahimahullah, and I will end with this. Imam Siyuti rahimahullah ta'alim brings, and everyone knows Imam Siyuti rahimahullah ta'alim, a well known scholar of Islam, a person who wrote books regarding almost every subject of Islamic sciences. And well known that some sciences where he is the source and his books are the main sources of those sciences, like in Ulum al Quran, his book Al Quran. And in all the uh, madaris they teach the Tafsir Jalalain. So Imam Shukri Rahmanullah, well known scholar of Islam, he writes in his book that once he says, I went to Medina Munawa for Hajj. And at that time, a person, another scholar, came to Medina Munawa. There were about 80,000 people in the Haram, in the Masjid of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This scholar comes into the Haram and he goes by the role of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he says, Assalamu alayka ya Rasulullah. Right from there, everyone heard the voice, someone saying, replying from inside, Wa alayka assalam ya waladi. Be salam be on you also, O my son. And then they saw a hand coming out of it, out of the grave to shake the hand with this man. This is what Imam Siyuti Ahmadullah raised. So, connection with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam of this ummah is very strong, extremely strong connection with our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We need to just stand it. Stand it by blessings, sending blessings, rule, a lot of rule of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and by following the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now, inshallah, we'll be having the graduation. What is graduation? Let me just take five minutes of your time to just tell you a little bit about graduation. It's a feeling that I have, I have to share it with you. For many of us, it's a happy occasion that, mashallah, we have a big graduation. And these students who spend so many years, they are going to graduate, and now, mashallah, they are going to get their degrees and certificates. But for us, it means much more than this. It means much more than this. Number one, in addition to having preparing people to come and work in the field of educating people regarding the knowledge of Quran and Hadith, in addition to this, these are the children who have spent, and I'm calling them still children, although they are bigger than me, some of them, but in the sense of relationship of teacher and student, these are the people who spend good number of years of, of their lives with us over here. 
seven years, eight years, they spend the poverty here with us. And believe me, we have to spend more time with them than we have to spend with our own wives and children. But we don't have time. The time goes with them. The majority of our time, we are there. And even when we are not there, why all the way it's on top of our mind, what's happening over there? These are the ones that are always in our mind. In our mind, on our mind, whatever, everywhere, they, they are the ones that are there. Only worries about, we have to make sure that everything is set over there. We have to make sure that they get what they need. We have to make sure that they are getting their education. They are getting all of um, their needs being fulfilled. Whatever else is there. The time when they are leaving, Alhamdulillah, is a very happy time for everyone, but I'm sure for those whose daughters are married, you will see the time when your daughter is leaving home. It's a happy occasion that, mashallah, that your daughter is getting married, but at the same time there is sadness that she is going to leave your home after you were taking care of her and she was uh, taking care of all of her upbringing and taking care of all of her needs and everything and education and now she would leave your home and just go somewhere else. It's the same feeling that we as teachers, as staff of Darulum, not just teachers, all the staff of Darulum we have towards these children. When they're leaving, believe me, I feel that a species of my heart are going away. All of this love, all of this connection, all of these throughout these years, and of course sitting only doing Qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah says this, Quran says this, Hadith says this, and this is what Sharia is. Deen now you're talking with them about the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you miss those opportunities, and especially when you have that connection established over a period of seven, eight years. So, Alhamdulillah, it is a happy occasion, but at the same time, we have that feeling that we feel that our pieces of our hearts are going away from us. But of course, parents have right, we try to get them, okay, just stay here. Even if you don't have nothing, just stay, let me, I want to just be happy here. That feeling is there, that I, if you just stay here, I want to just see you. And this is only the barakah of the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All I can say is, wherever they go, may Allah bless them. May Allah reward their parents, their relatives, their friends, their neighbors, and always give them success in this dunya and akhirah. Wherever they be, they be, and they be, whatever they do, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always use them for the service of the deen. And may Allah bless them to be like our sulaha, and the scholars of the ummah. And whatever shortcomings we have, through our this period of their education, their sacrifice of their homes, their relatives, staying away from everyone, staying with us here, whatever shortcomings we have towards them, may Allah forgive all of us. And may Allah give us the faith to do the best we can for these students of deen. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in the hadith that when the people who would seek the knowledge of deen they would come to you, this is in the hadith, when people who seek the knowledge of deen they would come to you, take care of them because they are my guests. They are my guests. Of course, what can we do now and how much can we do? We have we are a lot of shortcomings and with that we are very sinful people but may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfeel to do the best we can and use our best abilities and resources towards making the place better and not just this place, every educational place, every place that is devoted for teaching the ummah and the children the knowledge of deen and Quran and hadith and the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept all of us afu'l qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah alayhi wa alaykum wa nisa'ali 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 wa nis